When I say two, you say Freddy Fish 2, The Case of the Haunted Schoolhouse. That's right, after a super successful first episode, Among Us Entertainment smelled that dough boy. And they cooked up another Freddy Fish game, which they released two years after the first one in 1996. Again, the story isn't epic, just like last time. Freddy and Loofer are on their way to school, when they encounter the teacher and Kid Fish being scared. Apparently, a ghost has been stealing toys from the kids. Everyone's sad and it's up to our duo to solve this ghosting mystery. And as an adult, it's my job to click through this tough ghost busting mystery. Nah, that's a joke. Just like the first episode, it's a quick solvable click and point adventure game, which is actually shorter than Case of the Missing Kelp Seeds. Freddy and Luther's task is to hunt down the ghost, which they stumble upon in the first few minutes, as it escapes, and trap it by finding a fixed set of items. These items are, of course, scattered throughout the Sea Kingdom. Again, it's doing quests for other sea creature inhabitants, trading all of the items for different ones to get the essential one. Some of the characters make a comeback, maybe they were extremely popular or something, and are just as whack as last time. Our friend the electric eel still blocks a specific path and wants you to give him food to scoot. Again. Wow! I'm getting a major league sugar rush. See you guys later. The stingray is back, yes he is. Only his rule is standing there and make one comment. Aren't you kids supposed to be in school today? I don't know what he did wrong last time. Maybe he wanted too much money, but they gave him only this small part. So you still swim around from screen to screen, solving puzzles. And I gotta say, these puzzles have been upgraded in a positive sense. They have more logic to them. Untie a knot. Keep going like this and the rope will be untied and good work. Yay! Click at the correct moment so Luther can pick up glasses for this poor nerdy fish. Here are your glasses, Casey. Luther actually has a bigger part this time. He has more dialogue and in two occasions you take control of him. It's not actual control, it's just clicking at the right moments when he's in play. And he is in a Space Invaders clone game. Which is funny to play for a round or two. I personally didn't care for it too much because it's just too basic. Do you like singing? Cause if you do, you're in the right place. Singing, singing, it's all back in here. I got my box. Call my man. I'm always charged up with electricity. As you may have noticed, the gameplay recipe is much as the same as the first installment in the series. The two sharks are back, just as their boss, the Squid Father. Next to having songs and minigames, you can also visit a movie theater this time, in the same contrast as the stage theater in the first game. When you collected all the needed items for the ghost trap, you trigger a final movie, which shows you that the ghosts ba -dum -ba -dum, are actually our two best friends, our nameless sharks. What a surprise, oh my god, I had no idea. So it's just that the squid father wanted all the toys for himself, because he never had any. I don't understand why these two sharks still work for the squid father. He treats them like garbage, there's no payment as far as I can tell, and they always seem to get overwhelmed by Freddy's her power for arguments to share everything. She just might have a point there, boys. Okay, you can give back the toy. The squid father doesn't need the toys as much as the coffee. Toys get returned and Luther gives his toy to the sharks, so they can give that to the squid father as a gift. And Freddy and Luther save the day again in this second episode. And as far as I'm concerned, Freddy and Luther should be master detectives of the undersea world by now. The game is short, much shorter than part one. In 45 minutes, I saw the ending credits roll in comparison to the hour of gameplay in the first episode. As with that one, the puzzles can change a bit in a second playthrough in this one. So it's also worth playing a second run. Friday Fish in the Haunt of Schoolhouse has some minor improvements on the missing kelp seeds, namely in the puzzles department, but remains true to its formula. Why change a good, well-known ingredient is what the developers would have been thinking. In that manner, Friday Fish Part 2 plays it safe, and that isn't a bad thing at all. Fans from the first game ate this game like a Twinkie, and that's all that matters. Thank you for watching the 11th episode of In Retrospective, the series where I place older games in today's light to see if they hold up in 2020. In this case, the game does, but some games do not. Curious which games didn't? Go watch the previous episodes and don't forget to subscribe if you like this content. And I'll see you on a next episode of In Retrospective. Three, Mrs. Croker. There wasn't really a ghost.